Yeah. Yes. Indy, look. Oh, another lost episode, Shorty. Junior, some things are better off lost. I'm rolling. Are you rolling too? Newest thing, gun gets my goat. Oh, okay. Two by for you. <laughs> Hi, everybody. This is Big Anklevich. And this is Rish Outfield. And this. And we're. Is. That uh, gets my goat. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's just like tripping right out the door. Or right out the gate. Is that what they call it when you run a race? Really not going to do well. Maybe this is going to be a terrible, get ready for a terrible episode. Well, that gets my goat, folks. Another terrible episode. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, we're here again with That Gets My Goat. I had a little subject that came to mind that I thought it would be interesting to talk about with Senor Rish Outfield. Just to see what he thinks about it. Because I was thinking it myself. So... Uh, not too long ago, Hurricane Harvey came to town here in Houston, and because of that, I found myself stranded in my house and unable to make it to work, despite the fact that they really needed my help. I was still at home, and this happened for, I guess, just two extra days, although I was supposed to work Sunday as well, so really, I got three extra days off that week because of it. Everything was fine here you know our house wasn't really affected by the hurricane so so i was just sitting around for a long time just doing nothing and during that time i thought okay well i guess i could watch some tv shows and catch up on stuff that uh, i haven't seen and i thought the defenders came out so i should watch that but then i thought oh crap i haven't watched iron fist yet and I assume that Iron Fist is going to play into the Defenders. I mean, obviously, he's one of the Defenders, so... Okay, well, I gotta watch that. So I, I started watching Iron Fist, and I think I watched, like, four or five episodes. I don't know how many it runs, but I'm assuming somewhere around 13, because I think that's what they always go. I'm not somebody who can binge watch things. I know that that's, like, the cool thing that everybody does. But I just can't do it for very long. Like, f watching four shows in a row is about my limit. Once that happens, I'm like, okay, I need to, like, do something else. I need to go for a walk or, I don't know, stand up, do a anything other than that. So I, I had to quit. And then I never went back. <laughs> and, yeah, I still haven't seen the rest of Iron Fist, nor have I seen Defenders. Now, on top of that, I just saw the trailer for the Punisher series, which is a branch off of the Daredevil Season 2 series, which I did see that, so I'm, I'm familiar with the Punisher character that they've introduced. So now I have to see that. Uh, normally, me and my family watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. together, but this fall, instead of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., The Inhumans has come out. I don't know if we're too late or uh, what will be the deal with that, but we haven't jumped onto that yet. We've got different schedules than we used to, and so it's it's uh, a little harder for us to watch a show together as a family. Uh, and then the other thing that I saw the other day was the trailer for The Runaways. They had a trailer for that, which I think comes out on, what is this, what is the channel called, Oxygen or something like that? Oh, I don't know. Oh, maybe it's not that one. I don't know. There's the... I think it used to be called like Fox Family or something like that, and then they changed the name of it to something else. Aren't they the ones also that are doing the Cloak and Dagger TV show? They are. I I can't remember what they called it. It's not Oxygen, though. It's um, right. something else. Anyways, yeah, so Cloak and Dagger also, that's coming up, but hit. But yeah, me and my family used to watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Flash each week. We never did get into Legends of Tomorrow. That that one didn't do it for us. My kids have all watched Arrow, and you've told me Arrow was great. I haven't managed to sit down and watch Arrow. I don't know. Something about the tone of it just didn't turn me on. And then, of course, there's a Supergirl show, which I feel like I should be watching. 
I heard I had a friend at my old job that he would watch that every now and then. I don't know, they would, they would wait for a few to build up. They, I guess they like to binge, unlike me. And so they would let them build up on their DVR and then they would watch them. And he said the Supergirl show got better every week. So anyways, the subject of today's show is... What's the word for it? Burnout? Overkill? Is there such a thing? Have we gone too far? I mean, we used to complain way back when That Gets My Goat began that there wasn't enough superhero things. You know, you'd get a superhero movie a year and it was a big, huge event. Then it started to become more of a thing and people thought, oh, superhero movies are gonna die out soon because they had this one and this one and this one. People are gonna get sick of superhero movies, but they haven't. They just keep coming, and now the superhero TV shows are taking off, and they're coming and coming and coming. There's so many places that want them, and there's many different styles of them. You know, there's the really hardcore heavy ones you get on Netflix, and then the more lighter ones that you get on uh, CW, and there's several others in between. And... uh, I feel bad. I feel like I should watch all these because it's what I've been waiting for. It's what I've been wanting, but I can't. I just can't do it. And I don't know. It makes me sad. Is there such a thing as... Bur- do you feel a burnout, Rich Outfield? Well, there there certainly are a lot on television. You didn't mention there's a, a, a mutant show called Gifted. Yeah, that's another one I feel like I should watch. There's Gotham, Uh which tells, you know, the Gotham City Commissioner Gordon before he was Commissioner stories. Yeah, the leading up to Batman story. And, yeah, there was Legion. Uh Uh-huh, that one, yeah. Where was, what was that even on? Was that a Netflix show or what was that? I don't know, man. I'm sorry. I want to say Hulu, but I, I, I don't know. It wasn't Netflix. There's a new show that I didn't mention called Black Lightning. Yeah, Black Lightning is another Berlanti verse CW show. Is it CW? Yeah, it's going to be a, another CW show. And uh, and like a Jessica Jones season two, and a, I'm sure there's a Daredevil season three and a Luke Cage season two. Yeah, it's an embarrassment of riches, isn't it? <laughs> and I um, and we didn't even mention movies as well. No, we didn't. Uh, I mean, it, we it, we could spend ten minutes just listing. The upcoming superhero movies or comic book movies, if you wish. And I I guess we have reached a saturation point. Uh, yeah, I, I used to feel obligated to go see everything because they were so rare. And even if it was a character like Blade or a character like Elektra that I wasn't a particular fan of, I'd go or see... Or a character like Catwoman. Or a character like Catwoman... I would go see the movie because I wanted to support that genre and because I tended to enjoy them, those kind of movies, you know? And uh, Yes, Catwoman notwithstanding. <laughs> but now there are enough that are coming out that uh, you can afford to be picky and avoid the ones that don't look good. Yeah, I think I'm still going to skip Justice League. Just because I I think I would be a hypocrite if I went and saw Justice League. Also, though, I don't think I will enjoy it. And that should be more important. But Wonder Woman is in it. Yeah, but Wonder Woman was also in Wonder Woman. So, you know, hey, I could see that. Okay. But the, the, the thing with all those shows is you don't have to watch them unless you want to. Mm hmm. Even then, like, watch the first episode of Runaways. And if you don't like it, then don't go back because there are 10 other shows jockeying for its slot on your schedule. You know what I mean? Uh And you said uh, Legends of Tomorrow never appealed to you or Supergirl didn't grab you or whatever. Well, I, I mean, that's too bad for that show. Or maybe it's too bad for you if you really would have enjoyed Legends of Tomorrow. But Right. I mean, that's the thing that I wonder about. You know, there's... Like The Inhumans, for example, I heard lots of bad things about that show, that it just was not good. But this is what I've heard recently, is that after like episode two or three, it takes a sharp turn 
toward the good and it's much better and worth watching now. And so I feel, ah, oh, I, I should be watching Inhumans. I just have to struggle through the first few episodes and then, then it'll get good. Because like, I don't know, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. for example, we watched that and it wasn't amazing to start with. It was okay. It eventually became really worth watching before season one was over. That was awesome. But at the time, you know, it was just all there was. And so, of course, we watched it. But the, on top of that is all the other stuff, you know. There's other things. There's like Stranger Things, for example, which is a big hit that's uh, Stephen King meets uh, Steven Spielberg or something kind of a, of a TV show. And you've not watched it? I've seen half of it, but I haven't finished it. And I feel like, ah, oh, I need to use the time to finish that. And I've watched some other shows. Like I watched with my daughter all these shows that were on, oddly enough, MTV is where they played on. But we saw it on Netflix. The uh, Shannara series that they did. I think the only episode we have left is the last episode. And we haven't ever sat back down and watched it. Every now and then we'll say that to each other. Well, we need to watch that last episode of Shannara. But we don't, because it's just, I don't know. I, I'm willing to bet that she probably has watched it, because she's a kid, and so she has all the time in the damn world. But yeah, I, on top of that, I'm a crazy football dude, so I like to watch all the football games too, and I just can't find time to watch everything that I want to. I need one of those time turners that uh, Hermione had, so that I can like watch a show and then turn time back and watch a, a second show. <laughs> use the same hour again and again yeah i'm not sure maybe maybe you could pick one of those up at the wizarding world of harry potter at universal studios but uh, okay i don't know anybody that has one of those i'll look for that there we're actually not far from uh well not far we're less far from florida these days so we i think i could drive to orlando in a day so maybe i'll have to do that I don't know what to tell you about that. As long as they keep making money, they're going to keep making superhero programs, these superhero shows and movies. And we were talking just last episode that Thor 3 made more than Thor 2, and Thor 2 made more than Thor 1. So they'd be crazy to not make another Thor. It's only when... They get diminishing returns. And when people stop going, when people stop caring, um, that uh, we're going to see the end of any of these things. Um, gosh, that reminds me of a quote from Matthew Vaughn. He was the director of Kick-Ass and X-Men First Class. Okay. And this is an article from the LA Times. It says, The clock is ticking on the superhero craze in Hollywood. According to director Matthew Vaughn, I think we've kind of crossed the Rubicon with superhero films, Vaughn said. I think the opportunity to do a big budget one is only going to be there two or three more times. Then, he added, the genre is going to be dead for a while because the audience has just been pummeled too much. It's been mined to death and in some cases the quality control is not what it's supposed to be. People are just going to get bored of it. Uh, and that quote was from the LA Times, August 6th, 2010. <laughs> uh, and when you mentioned this to me last week that we were going to do this subject, I, I, I had to go dig up that interview with him because it was so long ago. And yet he was predicting that it, by then it was over. And so very wrong. No, Nostradamus, he is not. Two or three more big budget movies and that's it. The rest of the article talked about, this is what Matthew Vaughn is talking about. Because next year we have X-Men First Class coming out. Thor coming out. Captain America, the First Avenger, and Green Lantern. Surely that will be the tipping point. Yeah, Green Lantern kind of was a tipping point in some ways. <laughs> <laughs> it made me stop tipping uh, my waitresses. Wait, 
that has nothing to do with anything. That's funny because I, I bet you brought that quote up to me when you saw it the first time around in 2010 because I'm sure we've talked about this before and in the days that we talked about it there was way less than there is now. Because yeah, there's like an X-Men verse and I mean they tried to make a spider verse. I assume that's gone out the window, right? That's not coming back in any way. Well, it, Sony had all that uh, Spider-Man Homecoming money, so they're going to spend it on a Venom solo movie and a Black Cat and Silver Sable buddy cop, she best friends, bad guy movie. <laughs> and there's already a release date for Spider-Man Homecoming 2. So yeah, it, it, it's possible that that Spider-Verse is not going to last much longer, but they're going they're to attempt it. They're going to attempt it, huh? Okay. Mm-hmm. I assumed that they had learned their lesson and were going to let uh, Marvel take it from here. <laughs> oh, yeah, and, and and had you you and I not talked about this, surely we would have talked about this had you still lived around here and we were getting lunch together every week. But yeah, the Venom and Silver Sable movies are not part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Right. And they're, they're not going to have Spider-Man in them. And I just thought, wait, hold your horses... Don't spend a dime on this. Don't do that. It just there are people that love Venom. Okay, that's 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 great, but I don't know that Venom works on his own. He's a Spider-Man character and I mean his origin is all tied in with Spider-Man. If they want to just do like they did with Catwoman, a movie that was completely divorced from the Batman franchise. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Uh, I guess they could do that, but uh why would you why would you ever want to do that again? It's let, let's take the most notable thing about our character and remove it. The Catwoman is associated with Batman, who is someone that everyone loves. Let's make sure not to mention Batman in our movie. Well, how did that go? I mean, in Warner Brothers defense and F Warner Brothers, but in their defense, they had just made Batman and Robin they figured the Bat franchise is completely dead and we don't want to remind people of what we did to the Batman franchise. But yeah, I can guarantee you that more people would have gone to see Catwoman had it been tied to the Batman franchise, even after Batman and Robin. Yeah. And my, my, my guess is that they'll try to trick the audience into thinking that Venom is Spider-Man related or Marvel Cinematic Universe related. I, I don't know. We'll see how that goes. But yeah, they cast Tom Hardy as Venom, as Eddie Brock. I imagine a computer program is going to be Venom. But uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Are you serious with this computer program thing? Well, I am assuming that Venom will be CG is what I'm saying. Oh, okay. Sorry. I thought you meant that's because they can't just do it the way the comic books is and he's an alien symbiote. Instead... You know, that's what I thought you were saying. Some kind of computer virus or something is what becomes the the Venom symbiote. And it's actually, I don't know, nanobots or some (laughs) crap. That's That's what I thought you were saying. And I thought, oh no, come on. That movie already has a release date, October 5th, 2018. So less than a year from now, we will be complaining about that movie, perhaps. I Probably not. I think it will just zoom right past us. But yeah, that's one that if you if it doesn't look good, then skip it. You don't have to see it. Yeah, and I, I feel no shame in that. I have to admit, the DC Cinematic Universe, if the trailer or something makes it look interesting to me, then I'll go and see it. Probably, maybe. So I did see Wonder Woman, and I did see Suicide Squad. But I won't see the Justice League and I won't see Batman v Superman because of what I saw from the Man of Steel film. And I don't feel guilty about those at all. I don't feel bad in one, one bit that I'm missing those. But we had a, t- a teacher in one of our film classes that he would say that with movies, you vote with your dollar. For what you want. I don't know if, if most people have heard of this vid angel service. 
that exists out there, but VidAngel is a thing that you can get a movie with online and it will use, I think it uses like the closed captions or something like that to uh, find all the, all the naughty parts of the movie and then it censors them out for you. It's your video angel. It helps you keep from seeing these awful naughty things in your movies. There's been things like that for years going all the way back where people would try to watch R-rated movies even though they felt they shouldn't watch an R-rated movie and so they'd get some way to see it in a way that makes it not R-rated. And uh, yeah, this professor of ours talked about that and said, you know, you, when you watch a movie, you're basically voting with your dollars. You know, you're going out and saying, I want to see more movies like this. And uh, everything that you watch, you're casting a vote for that. And I feel like I need to vote with my dollars <laughs> for these shows that are out. I feel like I'm blowing it. And I guess when it comes down to it, they're not they're kind of not making it for me. They're making them for kids, for people who are younger than me. Because they're the ones that go and see movies and they're the ones that watch TV shows. And old guys like me don't have a lot of free time. So, like you said, you know, the first Thor made less than the second Thor, which made less than the third Thor. So, everything's doing fine. Sad thing is there's so many things that I want, I would really like to see. And I just can't manage to make time for it all. Am I crazy to say that it stresses me out that I can't watch these things? Oh, I, I, I mean, I don't is know. Is that a stupid thing to say? <laughs> That's sad. Because, I mean, at least with the Defenders, it'll still be there a year from now. Or two years from now. But with, you know, football, I know you love football. You're not going to watch the game that was on last week a month and a half from now. Because you already know who won by then. Um, right. And I, I imagine that part of the fun of watching sports is, you know, keeping track of how well somebody's doing and talking to your buddies about, oh, did you see that play? And I, The know. way I watch football, I have a uh, thing that I've signed up for that's called Game Pass. And uh, what it is, is you can watch the show, the, the football games, after they're done. So you kind of have to not pay attention to stuff the day of, you know what I mean? Um, so that you don't get the game spoiled on you. But the sad thing is, on the Roku box that, we, that I use to watch it, they came out with a new version of the, of the thing. And for some reason, it would show the scores of all the games, like everywhere. Like you would go onto the menu where the game was and it would say, who won? It would just give you the score right there. And so what I would have to do is like kind of look away from the screen so I could see out of my peripheral vision, like the shape of the screen. Like, okay, there's a box here and a box here and I need to go down to that box and over to that box and hit enter and then the game will start. And then when the game would start, it would come up and it would say who played and who won and what the score was. And so I'd have to wait like for the first 10 seconds until that went away. And then I could watch the game. And if I was stupid enough to ever hit pause, uh, then it would bring up the score again. And I was just like, man, this is so frustrating because it keeps spoiling games on me. But yeah, that is, that is definitely one of the, the good things about that is all those shows will come up on Netflix. Like, I feel really bad. There's a, a show, and this is not a superhero show, but it's a sci-fi show, which is also kind of my thing, which is The Expanse, um, the James S.A. Corey books, which I've read all the books, and I love them. And when I heard they were making a show of these books, I got really excited, and I really wanted to see it. And I probably would have seen it by now had it come out in, uh, immediately in a format that I could have got at. But it wasn't on Netflix. Uh, it wasn't on Hulu. It wasn't on uh, any of the things that I normally get my stuff from. And I don't, I don't know if it's still going. I heard really good things about it, that it was a, a great show. But, you know, I, I saw articles about it saying, you know, you need to watch this show before it gets canceled. And you can only bemoan the fact that it's gone. 
because you know that happened to, to Firefly. You don't want it to happen again to another great show. But yeah, I haven't been able to watch it still. And um, there is that about TV shows is they're sort of transient when it comes to it. You know, if people aren't watching, they just go away. And even if they were good, they just go away. So the Netflix shows are good because they make the whole season before it ever starts and they just put it up there and it's going to stay forever. They're not going to get rid of it. It's always going to be available on Netflix because it's their thing and they want to have it to uh, attract people to their service since the, the various services are becoming more and more plentiful. When you brought up Vid Angel, wh- why, what was that about? Uh, maybe that didn't make sense. If you're watching an R-rated movie, but you want it to not be an R-rated movie, you're casting your vote with your dollar for R-rated movies. So basically you're telling Hollywood, make more R-rated movies because that's what I want to see. Even if you're trying to watch the PG version of it, you're being dumb. If you want no more R-rated movies, then only watch movies that aren't rated R, and then Hollywood will make more of them. Because Hollywood is just a money grabber. That's all they want. So whatever's going to get them money, they will make more of them. If superhero movies are making money, they'll make more of them. If westerns are making money, they'll make more of them, etc. on down the line. That was what that was about. Okay, cool. (laughs) I guess I didn't finish that thought. Yeah, you've got a good point with the ratings on TV shows and all that, but maybe with Netflix, they'll keep track of all the shows that you choose to stream on Netflix. But unless you're a Nielsen family, there's still... Nobody is going to care whether you watch The Expanse or not. Yeah, that's true. But... If you walk into a Best Buy and you buy the first season box set of The Expanse, they'll take note of that. You do vote with your dollar. Yeah. The thing is, until you retire or the kids are out of the house, you're not going to suddenly magically find more hours in the day. Yeah. I I, I don't know if it's just going to get worse or if it's going to stay steady for years and years, but... The, nobody has enough hours in the day except for Hermione Granger and uh, <laughs> yeah you can't watch all the stuff that you w- would like to watch and certainly there are shows that you would enjoy if you watched them but there's no reason to watch a show <laughs> that you don't enjoy and it's just uh, because there's so much stuff competing for your dollar now for your time i you and i both remember when we were kids and you would sit through shows that you hated to get to the shows that you liked and why you and i didn't think to just turn off the tv for 30 minutes and read a book or draw or go outside and watch the clouds go by i don't know (laughs) but as a kid that doesn't occur to you It's just like, well, you know, I got to watch Mr. Belvedere so I can get to Growing Pains or, you know, vice versa. Whatever you don't like to see whatever (sighs) you do like. And yeah, there'd be lots of times when I would sit and I would watch... Gotta watch Benson so that I can get to Family Ties. There you go. I would watch the same episode of Perfect Strangers that I didn't like the first time because (laughs) I was waiting for the show that I did like. And what am I going to do? Not watch TV? Yeah. What the heck? But yeah, now that we're grown ups, I don't know. You have obligations. If your wife is wanting to watch something with you and you hate it, you can't very well just turn it off. Or if your kids are super into something and you're like, well, I'm watching it as bonding time with my kids. But if it's just you, don't force yourself to watch more. I mean, that was the experience I had with Star Trek Discovery is everybody got the first episode for free. It's just like a some smack here in the in the playground <laughs> area of the school, you know, the first bits for free, but the first episode I didn't like. It didn't hook me. It didn't give me what I wanted. It was not a good experience and so I was unwilling to pay 
for the second episode and third episode and fourth episode and fifth episode. Now, I have talked to people who did. And they said, oh, the fourth episode is really, really good. That's when it gets really good. Well, that may be. And one day when it like hits Netflix or something like that, I probably will watch it because I'm a big Star Trek fan. But Definitely not when you have to pay for it. The first episode was not good enough to make me pay for it and yeah, to continue. And so it's just the same thing. It was like, I'm not going to sit through Mr. Belvedere anymore. <laughs> the streets on the channel I never noticed before. Who cared? <laughs> he dropped chick your jacket when you came through the door. No one glared. That's so sad. <laughs> I mean, I, I shouldn't have singled out Mr. Belvedere because it wasn't the worst show on television, but it wasn't good. Yeah. I just, back in those days, and if you're a young person who does not remember a world before the internet, then all of this stuff is crazy talk. It's talk about the Great Depression. But it's just back <laughs> in the days when there were only four television channels, you watched whatever was on. And you, having like 106 siblings probably had to watch tons of shows you didn't like because it wasn't your turn to choose what was on. Uh, I had a sister who liked musicals and would videotape them and watch them over and over and over again. So I sat through a lot of stuff that I wouldn't have otherwise. You wouldn't believe how many times I've seen... And this is not a musical, but The Man from Snowy River, or <laughs> The Sound of Music, or Newsies. Ah! Yeah, I sat through a lot of stuff because of uh, the fact that other people were watching it. Well, I'm sorry, I don't know if this is what you wanted to talk about. But uh, yeah, sorry, man, you have to just choose one or two shows and let the others fall by the wayside, unless you can figure out a way to live with less sleep or, I mean, you used to have this Sunday night activity where you would watch a show or several shows with the kids. And that's how you would watch agents of shield or the flash or breaking Amish, you know, these, these classic family superhero shows. And uh, that tradition has ended. Well, we haven't, Kicked it back into gear since uh, we've moved out here. I think a lot of it had to do with just our schedules have changed a lot. We used to do it on Sunday, but my wife worked Sundays up until last week, the week before, maybe I think that changed. And now she doesn't work Sundays. Instead, she works Saturdays. So maybe it'll start again. Might be too late, though. Like all the shows that we would have watched have like gotten to the point on hulu where the episodes are dropping off so we won't know what's going on ah but uh yeah i don't know i don't know maybe it'll start up again so far it hasn't we went this uh past week to this place called big thicket which is a national preserve which is only like an hour away and it's a cool place it has lots of nature and you can go hiking and etc etc Uh, So that's what we did this time, but what will happen next Sunday? I don't know. Yeah, I I think that we've covered it, I guess. I don't know. I guess the the biggest thing about this is that I'm kind of... I'm surprised that we've gotten to the point where there's so much stuff that I can't watch it all. And I guess I'm surprised and a little bummed out because I would like to watch it all. It'll be around... So I guess as long as I'm around, I don't kick the bucket here soon, then I can watch it later. So that's good. That's uh, one of the nice things about movies and TV and stuff like that, especially these days that they've made pretty much everything available for you. If you want to watch it, you can. So I suppose I'll probably see all these things eventually. Just have to give it time. Well, and also... We used to have to watch stuff because we were going to talk about it on the show. Uh, And that's sort of fallen by the wayside, too. Yeah, I haven't watched Defenders either. But it's mostly because I don't have anybody to watch it with. All of those other Marvel Netflix shows I watched with my friend. And so 
now that he's gone, it's like, well, uh, I don't really want to watch it by myself. That is harder, too. Maybe I'd watch more of that stuff if my wife was around more often, although she doesn't seem to watch that stuff. She's not so interested in those. When she is around, I wind up watching, uh, depending on if I come in when she's already watching something or not. There have been times when I've been sitting there going, uh, I'm not sitting here through keeping up with the Kardashians anymore. I'm sorry. I, I'm just, I'm going to go into the other room. Uh, last night, we actually sat down and went through Netflix trying to find something that we were both interested in. And we looked and 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 eventually we're like, I think I'm too tired to watch a movie. And so what we finally settled on was an episode of, and we'd never seen this show before, the Dick Van Dyke show. Holy cow, really? Yeah. And the sad thing is, my wife totally fell asleep. She did not make it through the 25 minute long episode of the Dick Van Dyke show. She was awake long enough to go, holy crap, that's Mary Tyler Moore? She's so young. And then, yeah, she fell asleep. And I watched it and I was surprised by what it was. I don't know, the first episode anyways was strange. But yeah, that's what we we wound up watching. So I don't know that watching uh, superhero shows with my wife will ever be a thing unless the kids are along for the ride. I don't know, the, the Netflix Marvel series are pretty rough. So I try not to encourage my kids to watch them, although I think they've watched all of them, just not with us. So at least I don't have to be uncomfortable while Luke Cage is pounding the heck out of Jessica Jones. And I'm sitting next to my 13 and 15 year old daughters going, oh, this is, this is uncomfortable. What's that? Oh, you need me to run to the store right now? Okay, anything to get me out of here. But uh, the CW shows and the ones on ABC are always uh, safe. So we, we'll probably keep watching those when uh, our Sunday tradition comes back. Well, yeah, you'll have to tell me once you start watching those because it's fun to have somebody to talk to about the shows. You and I had many, many, many conversations about The Flash when we'd both watch each episode and then talk about them afterwards. So yeah. maybe that can start over. Yeah, that'll be good. All right, well, I'm going to let you go. I'll stop making you stay up late. Well, it, for you, it's 2 in the morning, man. That's right, so I probably better hit the sack. So we ought, we ought to time turn that damn thing so you get some sleep time. Yeah, time turn it back to midnight so I can go to sleep at a normal time. <sighs> it's too bad those time turners aren't real. All right. Well, thanks for hanging out with me and talking uh, comics and comic-related material. And we'll be back again next time, folks, with another That Gets My Goat. Hope you enjoyed this one, and sorry if you didn't. I'm Vic Anglovich. <laughs> and I'm Rich Outfield. See you, folks. Good night. No one glare. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons attribution, no derivatives license. That means you can copy it, share it, and make paper dolls out of it. But you can't sell it or use it in your little voodoo rituals. I'm talking to you, sir.